Hey everyone, welcome to the banner review of Axtar and Cleo, another tag unit featuring Draconian Princess Fina. So let's get right to it, shall we? Axtar and Cleo in base form are a uh, absolute mirror of equity, physical DPS chainer focused on ice mainly, and in their Brave Shift, which is pretty much their go to damage spec, if I would say so, uh, their attack chainer, but also a super strong dark finisher. And we'll see in a moment why that is. So let's check their abilities. Um, yeah, it, it's looking good. So. Uh, their ability side of things is a little bit larger and you will see in the brave shift form how bad this can go but yeah uh, in their base form they have that top uh, one ability which cannot be multicast please be aware of that um, it's a single cast only it'd be a little bit overpowered if you could multicast that and you will see why um, with their brave shift form in a minute or two but yeah, as you can see, their technically highest multi, uh, modifier attack is their ice attack with uh, 80x modifier. But rest assured, their single target attack is a lot stronger if you power it up. And then they have the usual stuff for these tag chainers. They, attack, uh, they can increase their attack by 300. Curiosity uh, strikes again. They can also increase the SPR by 300, but I'm not sure why they, why they would need SPR. They have no SPR scaling, so I'm not quite sure why this is in here, but oh well, I'll take it. More, more survivability towards magic attacks, I guess. Uh, they can also decrease ice uh, resistance to the enemy by 120, uh, imbue ice to themselves. They have a 150 party uh, human killer buff for four turns as well as mitigating damage magical and physical that is for 15 for four turns at 15 percent value not too shabby and uh, they can amplify ice and dark with another magnus and also increase the lb by 200 percent uh, for three turns though and the last ability on the bottom over here as you can see it is stacked, as you can see. So on turn one, out of uh, immediately it will fill a big uh, rate increase by 150. It will start replenishing 100 MP split over one turn <laughs> to all allies. On the next turn, it will auto cast a 125 um, MP fill, increased uh, LB fill rate, also increasing LB damage by 100% to all allies, which is very cool. It is slot efficient. Two, as you might have noticed, we don't have that many units that grant AOE LB increase, so that is a huge plus. And on the second turn, it's pretty much more LB fill, more MP refill, but it's still 100% uh, LB increase for the whole party, which, suffice to say, is still very cool. On the passive side of things, nothing too surprising. They do have 200 through double hand attack innately. And if you're equipping their trust master or super trust master, they have guts and they also increase their LB gauge by five crystals per turn. And their LB in base form costs 53 LB crystals, which is a little bit uh, more costly than say Last and Dragon, for example. And it doesn't really do that much damage. It's a 100x modifier, it's attack attack. It's an LB chain. As you can see, it's 24 hits. So it's in the vein of um, Rain and Fina, pretty much. Um, yeah, let's check out the brave shift. And, and here's what I meant earlier. As you can see, I had to go for one page for the abilities only because their uh, uh, five turn cooldown on available on turn one, the run on the right side, it is super stacked. Uh, but pretty much on the left side, as you can see, it's more of the same. It's a dark typed attack with 50% ignore the defense. Um, you have a super strong dark attack on turn five available, uh, which is 52x modifier dark damage and 50% defense ignore. It's attack attack also with seven hits. And then the usual through an attack SPR, dark, dark imperil, dark imbue, 
150 human killer and mitigating damage from humans, as well as the ice and dark amp as well. But the kicker here is their, um, uh, let me check, I believe this is something like Disciple and Master or something, it's black and then I can't, uh, uh, I I should have no I should know all these countries but anyway, um, so for the first turn or immediately you will see a forty x modifier to uh, this one ability over here, which makes it already eighty x and fifty ignore damage right, and then it increases even further to eighty x and to one ten x. So at the end of all things, you have a 150x modifier with 50% defense ignore at the end of all of this, which is very, very good. And it also increases the uh, attack chain attack, the dark chain attack chain attack by 5x at the end of, or at the second round of this. It is really powerful. And one of the rotations actually includes her, well, quote unquote finishing move that can be imbued where whichever you like. So she's not technically locked to dark, but she deals the most damage with dark, which is quite obvious. And uh, on the passive side of things, nothing too surprising, still 200 true double hand, still the uh, guts with TMR, STMR equipped. She has only 100% innate um, LB damage. And her LB finish, yeah, it is a finisher, it's a one hit, uh, is a 125 modifier. So it's not the highest, to be quite honest. But what's really cool here is the 15% katana imperil for four turns. And by the way, I al almost forgot to mention her uh, big cooldown also has an instrument imperil. Now, instruments, mind you, we don't use instruments as of right now, but Hopefully, or maybe sometime down the line, instruments will become viable because instruments have the highest variance in the game and making instruments viable with Accent Cleom might be a cool idea. And it's also something fun to play around with, right? We always use either katanas or swords, maybe some daggers for physical damage dealers, but we are rarely using, um, like, say, what's it called? axes or maces for example nobody uses them both rarely do you use both outside of Furion's NV Furion's bow for example so I, I believe there is some more merit and incentive to also make other weapons playable and instruments are one of them for example just like maces or axes now let's move to the trust master and super trust master. So the trust master is a materia which provides 70% attack if you're wearing a katana and 30% LB damage. Um, the most comparable one to this would be AC clouds, uh, S tier, no trust master, um, courage to move on, which has 60% unconditional uh, attack percent and also 30% LB damage. So. The material in itself is quite strong with high damage and good LB damage. However, as you might have noticed, most most of the time, at least for me personally, I'm using uh, LB damage increases that got multiples of 25. Say Soros STMR has 75% increase, um, or say Hard Overcoming Hatred, which is Kiano's TMR has 50%, 30%. Is oftentimes a little bit awkward unless the passives from the unit have an awkward numbered LB damage, for example, per se. That that might be a, a way to do this as well. But it's really up to you and how you build the unit. So the thirty percent might actually be the tipping point where you actually get to cap and exactly cap and not over cap by a lot, for example, unless you're using uh, weird STMR such as such, uh, such as. Um, Squalls Alliance Heart, for example, which is 55, which is another very awkward number for most of the time. Okay, and their Super Trust Master is a two-handed katana. I forgot to mention that this is two-handed, but I guess you get the you get the gist of it by the variance roll. So it has 207 attack, which is huge. 50% accuracy and a 
1.05 to 1.55x variance. Not too shabby. It also has 50% human killer and 50% LB damage. This is the highest flat attack two-handed katana in the game. The next best one is Quadra Katana from Supreme Diva X Star. And furthermore, just to show you how good this is, um, only Searing Ember, which is a uh, Xeno of the Beta Star, I believe, a Super Trust Master, has more human killer, 75, but it lacks the LB damage. So this weapon, in terms of pure stats and passive, is stacked. And uh, yeah, it has also good variance possibilities. If you strike the 1.55x variance, it'll be really good to go. And by the way, this is the first katana to have the LB passive. Let's check out the vision card. Uh, I also included the animation, so let's see. Um, it's a it's a cute animation, as you can see. Unpacking the gift card, uh, gift box. So at level one and ten, it's a forty base attack and ninety base attack, a little bit low for a pure damage dealer, mind you. And their passives are pretty bad, and I will tell you why in a second. So forty attack with katanas at level four and seven. And at level 10, it's 50 true double hand attack plus 25% accuracy for FFBE units only. Like I said, this is a very low, well, it's, it, it is very low attack for pure DPS. We usually should have like 100 at the very least uh, from my point of view. 110 is always good to see, but we only have Riku for that at the moment. It's uh, only 80% passives is low. And um, the reason is we have NVX stars. Um, what's it called? Vision card. And that one is 120% attack with the same requirement. So why would you use Axter and Cleome's vision card? Also, the level 10 passive is absolutely useless if you're using Cloud's, Cloud Remake's STMR. That is flat 200% true double hand and you're good to go. Axter and Cleome are already capped on their true double hand with one STMR. You don't need this vision card. So yeah, conclusion, just save your gig It's uh, This vision card is, I, I don't see anybody who would want to use this. All right, next up. And here's the interesting part. Um, you can use the Brave Shift in two ways. And I have both ways. So this is the gearing. The gearing really doesn't change uh, between the two uh, Brave Shift rotations. But first of all, let's check the um, the usual Brave Shift. Um, uh, not Brave Shift, the base form. And the base form, you might forego the LB because it is technically very weak and instead build them for supporting skills, right? So their five, turn five, their five turn cooldown buffs LB damage for the whole party, like you've seen. And it is undispellable, which is a huge perk. And um, also LB fill rate uh, is nice to see. It returns MP to the party. You can use their 50, 150 human killer with human mitigation. They have a lot of things, so that you'd increase the LB damage, ice dark um, attack increase, ice and peril, ice imbue. It's all cool in their base form that you will be in there on that second turn, but it's not necess necessary. The damage is pretty high though, mind you. In the brave shift, as you can see, it's pretty much um, like for like the same rotation as in the base form, but the damage is higher. Well, technically, because the modifier is higher. That is the only reason. And the other possibility, which is um, dealing a lot more damage than this. All right, I, 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 I know how to uh, read this. So um, this one is, um, so this is black. No danso shinpen shito deshi. This must... Uh, this is a uh, new black bullet something master and disciple i haven't i haven't checked the english proper names but it should be new black bullet master and disciple should be the correct translation and um the the lower one over here where my mouse is hovering over is just twin 
agitate. Agitato. Yeah, agitate. Whatever that means. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, on turn one, you would use their master and disciple ability, which is the progressive buff. You would also increase the attack and use the tag attack, but it's up to you pretty much. On turn two, you would dark imbue and imperil and use the tag attack twice. It has already increased modifiers at this point. Turn three, you would ice and dark amplify. Use the LB buff. It's one ability. And um, two tag attacks. At this point, the tag attacks have the highest modifier. On turn four, you will only use their um, twin agitate for uh, as a finisher move so you need an outside source of chaining use this and you have the highest amount of damage possible because at this point it's at 150x with 50 percent de defense ignore and on turn five you've got nothing better to do you're waiting for your um master and disciple ability to come off cooldown so you do use their lb and then repeat this whole process all over again and the damage rotation in this is super high they have very very high sustained damage if you're doing this and this is technically the most optimal optimal way to um, deal damage but as you can see this pretty much forgoes their uh, 150 human killer but as you can see you might as well put this in here instead of attack attack for example so there is some wiggle room to do other things you can just like i said stop doing or well re replace one of the attack attacks Okay, that concludes Axe and Cleom. Now let's move on to Draconian Princess Fina. Her base form has only new passives. It's 150 LB damage. She also gains evoke damage. But if I'm not mistaken, she doesn't even have evoke damage skills in her base form. She didn't get new active abilities. And she has 400 more static magic. And some of her abilities have increased modifiers. The LB... I included it here, but at a closer look, they didn't change her LB in base form at all. So it's the same as before. Now, all her damage and all the rage is coming from her. Oh, I miss. Whoops. This should read Brave Shift form, her base form. Sorry for that typo. Um, in her Brave Shift, she's a light evoke damage dealer, and she's a super, super strong light evoke damage dealer. Um, not only is it 73 evocation damage, which is higher already than Terra's 71x evocation fire damage. Um, she also can conveniently reduce uh, light, light, re light resistance to the enemy at 120. She has her own light M, much in the light of Terra, pretty much. And um, she can also increase her LB damage by 250 and immediately fill the LB. So she's a discount Terra, but w w when it comes to LB finishing, well, she's not an LB finisher though, as you can see, it's 24 hits. So she's more of an LB chainer, but she's a better version of Terra when it comes to chaining. And I will show you an application of hers with uh, Ashura tomorrow. I need to record this video. Uh, sometime later today, I need. I, I already told some friends to prepare me one Draconian Princess Fina. I hope they do this by later today or tomorrow morning, so I can take her out to some Ashura killing. But yeah, she is super good. And if you're having trouble with the boss rush, you can replace my Terra with Draconian Princess Fina. It absolutely works. And it also makes uh, Antenola easier because she uses elemental damage and the top vine is weak to elemental damage, for example. All right, so how do both of them fare in the meta? Axe and Cleome DPS-wise are super strong sustained damage dealers. They got a high LB burst, though it is marginally uh, weaker than last gen. And when I'm saying marginally weaker, it's really just two or three percent weaker than last gen so if you didn't pull for last gen x and cleome are a very good substitute they have the highest sustained damage in the game for physical dps's unless you count in 
Uh, Crown, Cl I was about to say Clown Prince, but Crown Prince Noctis is better unless he doesn't get the enhancements he did get in JP on Global. Draconian Princess Fina, uh, she's your best bet if you missed Terra. Um, while the LB chaining, um, I, I should have wrote LB chain finishing because she's not an LB finisher. Um, it, it never reaches terror le levels, but her chaining capabilities are technically better than Terra's. Now, Axe and Cleom, let's get back to these two. Um, the 150 human killer party buff is very cool. They also have this 100% LB buff to the party. They have break cures, party break cures. They have storm, uh, stop and charm cure as well. So they are stacked when it comes to um, support abilities. They also have uh, Katana and Instruments in Peril. But yeah, Instrument in Peril, like I said, I'd love to see them focus more on Instruments, give them a little bit more love so we can actually use them. X and Cleom also have the 70% damage against broken enemies. As you've seen, Asura, for example, does not use this anymore. The next one that is going to use this is Ymir, but Ymir is super trivial. And the passive is broken at the moment. It hopefully will get fixed next week. But we are talking Gumi here, so they might not fix this at all and making the soul passive completely useless. The Super Trust Master is pretty much must have. It is really good, but if you don't need it, it's pretty much must have for it. Really the tip of the top, the min maxers, they do want this. And 50% Ice and Dark Amp in either form very cool for example our latest tech chainers um, dark soul and fina they were missing one of the amplification they were dual element but only had amplification for one element that was dumb i'm happy they fixed that for x and cleo so in conclusion x and cleo they are currently the best sustained physical damage dealer and they will stay at the top for a while too draconian princess fina she's one of the top damage dealers especially when it comes to sustained damage. Um, and it, there's only three that are technically better than Draconian Princess Fina. It's Terra, it's Faris, and Luna Freya. Faris we might get in March. Luna Freya we are likely to get sometime April or even May, depending on how much they uh, scatter uh, Arden and Noctis out. But yeah, uh, Draconian Princess Fina will carry you for a long time and she's a super safe investment as well um, just a small um, addition it didn't fit i didn't want to overload this um, this slide so ax and cleom have higher sustained damage than the elric brothers while the elric brothers have super high burst way more than ax and cleom but when it comes to sustained damage ax and cleom are still better and also regarding draconian princess fina I know this is silly, but for her to be super, super, super strong, you need two Terra Super Trust Masters, so the sword from Terra, to make her the best you can get. And at that point, you gotta ask yourself, why use Fina if you have two Terra SDMRs anyway? You might as well use Terra. But yeah, yeah, I mean, there is an exception. The boss is immune to fire or absorbs fire, such as Tiamat. That might be a good case for Fina, but otherwise, I guess you should use Terra still. But don't get me wrong, Draconian Princess Fina is very, very good. So yeah, that begs the question, should you pull? Now, if you didn't pull for Terra, you will find a super strong chaining replacement and discounted LB chainer with Draconian Fina. And if you're looking for a high physical sustained damage unit, Ax and Cleom are here to stay at the top. You will not see them fall down in this category for a long time. Not even um, Arden and Noctis eclipse their um, sustained damage. Arden and Noctis are just super high burst damage dealers, but their sustained damage is pitiful compared to Ax and Cleom. They also have um, very cool party support. 70% break damage. I, I probably should delete this from it because it's useless at this point in time. Awesome STMR and you will really not regret pulling either unit. 
But for me personally, the star of this banner is Draconian Princess Fina. She's just so versatile as an evoker. And me personally, I like evoke damage dealers. They do have a lot of perks. Um, I know they're hard to gear for, but once you have them, you can ignore so many abilities these bosses have. It's really cool. And it's still a good option for pulling for Ax and Cleom to get the best sustained damage dealer. Unless Crown Prince Noctis gets his upgrades, but the gist of it, Ax and Cleom are more or less a trial unit, less less so a dark visions unit and i personally i don't need any unit anymore for the next foreseeable weeks or months for upcoming trials i can just clear them with the units i have at the moment for me personally it's coming down to pretty much pulling for units that i like lightning for example um arden noctis and luna freya are the three or four sorry four units that I really want and I'm gonna pull for them but anything else I will really just skip. I might use some tickets for the FMA collab because the SDMRs as per usual for um, time limited units are super good so I might use tickets for them but other than that the the four, uh, four aforementioned units are the ones I'm going to pull for so I'm gonna skip literally all the other banners just as a heads up. And that concludes our um, banner review of Extract and Cleom with Draconian Princess Fina. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video helped you. And we'll see each other hopefully tomorrow for the Draconian Princess Fina Ashura trial video. Have a nice day. Have a nice Friday. Goodbye.